Hi there, I'm Tom Field. I'm Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. Topic today is zero trust. We're gonna get down to the nitty gritty details. And who better to get down to the nitty gritty with than Chip? Speaking today with Richard Chip Chitamitre. He's the technology evangelist with Corelight. Chip, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks so much, Tom. Chip, it has been a year since President Biden's executive order that really called out zero trust as a federal government focus. How are you seeing your customers embrace this architecture? So I've been seeing it in a lot of different ways. Um, so if you're talking about OMB 2131, which was designated for essentially logging, um, I've been seeing a lot of my customers frantically, you know, making that rush to trying to buy products that do the things that they're supposed to be doing. Um, however, I've been seeing just, you know, lots of different confusion because there is no real guidance. It's just mainly suggestions. Where do you see the most misunderstandings regarding how to actually transition to zero trust? So it's kind of hard, but where I've been seeing that uptick has been mainly in the uh, secure access edge service edge um, piece of the piece uh, of the pie, which is called SASE. And everybody thinks that just buying a SASE product is going to get them to zero trust. And I actually don't believe that's true. There's a lot of things that are missing um, in conjunction with that to make it a true zero trust network. So talk about some of the, the specific network details that need attention. Yeah, so what I've been noticing is that a lot of people have just been satisfied with their gateway information or you know, maybe their basic DNS or even just firewalls. And so the problem I see is that they haven't been actually analyzing a lot of their east-west traffic. So because they have that gap in network visibility, they're actually not really satisfying the need when they're moving towards zero trust. Now, how about some of the use cases you see through your own partners? So one of the partners we've been working with has been Splunk and we've been working with them on a turn, essentially a zero trust verification architecture. The idea around it is that if you pair up network logs, right, the ground truth, because you can't really change that information, with SASE, with the logs they generate, as well as the uh, host logs, right, the EDR or the endpoint logs, um, we're able to match up uh, with high certainty, like whether or not they're logging or whether or not they're missing the logs. And that helps with the zero trust verification because we want to make sure that SASE and zero trust is actually being enacted. If there is something missing, we can always say that if something is missing, why is it missing? And therefore we can also verify and never trust. As you know, we've got an audience that's eager for direction. What advice do you have for organizations to plot their zero trust roadmaps and to know how they're progressing down the road? So zero trust isn't just an overnight thing, right? It's always a step-by-step -step, um, level in the architecture. So a lot of it is rules, access management, whether it's segregation of the network or it's actually creating application you know, um, verification, there is a section that needs to be verified with network data. So I always tell them if they don't have that section of the network covered, they should start verifying and monitoring it. And then as they build their maturity to just do it, take it step-by-step step and do that verification process. Shit, let's bring it back to Corelight. How are you helping your customers to embrace zero trust? So what we're doing with our network metadata essentially is that we're helping people do that verification layer from the network. Because we're a passive sensor monitor, we're able to just provide the good and the bad, right? Whether or not zero trust is being enacted, whether or not they see potential threats on the network um, and to hopefully lower their threat landscape, right? To be able to hone it into a small surface area. Um, that's where Corelight is definitely taking our uh, position within this fight. And because we have a lot of people like myself who have been doing the incident response and threat hunting um, nature, we actually understand what customers are missing and how we can help them. Very well said. Chid, I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Tom. Okay, we've been talking about zero trust. You have just heard from Richard Chit Chidimitre. He's a technology evangelist with Corelight. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you for your time and attention today.